In the last video, we covered how we can send more complex objects over the network by using object input stream and object output stream. But, you know, there's still an issue. So the issue is that we can't send and receive messages at the same time, and that the messages, they have to be sent and received in a certain order, otherwise things won't work. And that is all because we're running everything on one thread. And in this video, I'll show you how you can use multi-threading to overcome that issue. What multi-threading is, is that it's basically an illusion of multiple things happening. So multi-threading, there's, there's one very important distinction you have to make. Multi-threading doesn't speed things up. Multi-threading adds functionality that wasn't possible with single threading. So in this case, our program is currently single threaded, which means that all of these, they execute in order. So we can only have one thing happening at any given time, but that doesn't play well with our chat, with our chat application, because we don't know when an incoming message is coming. Otherwise, you know, everything's scripted and that's not very fun. So we want, we want multiple things to be happening at the same time. We want to, we want the ability for the users to type stuff in and send a message, but we also want a listener to run on the side that listens to any incoming message at all times and then display it immediately onto the screen. So multi-threading, again, is the illusion of multiple things happening at the same time. But what it's actually doing is that it's switching the CPU into and out of threads very, very quickly. So it's almost like, I'm, I don't think, you, it's almost like maybe you've tried it before, maybe you haven't, but when you run between two places really, really quickly to other people, it seems that you know, you've duplicated. But in reality, you're just running back and forth so quickly that people can't seem, people think that you know, you're at two places at the same time, but actually you're not. The TV show The Flash explains it better than I do. So here's a clip of multi-threading, literally multi-threading happening in The Flash. It's an afterimage, a speed mirage, if you will. So yeah, as you can see in the video, the reverse flash, you all, you know, the reason why he could trick Cisco is because he used multi-threading. So you're gonna get tricked if you don't use multi-threading. You want to be the one that tricks other people, right? Um, anyhow, so there are two ways of making uh, a code, a code block uh, multi-threaded. One is by extending thread and the other one is by implementing runnable. Now, the, the only difference is that for the thread, you have to extend it. For the runnable, you implement the interface. But I would urge you not to use extends thread. The lecture slides and, you know, on both uh, the newer slides and, you know, Professor Miller's older uh, example files, they, they all extend thread, but I don't want you to do that. The reason being, you don't want to extend something unless you really have to use the inheritance property. But in this case, you, you're not really using the inheritance. All you want to do is have a run method. So whatever thing that's in the run method runs on a separate thread. So let's say, uh, let's say I'll move this part, these parts into the run method. So what happens is that while these are executing you know in order these are also executing in order but in a separate thread so lines 23 to 28 and 29 to 31 they are two pieces of code that are happening at the same time one is in this normal one is in this normal uh this this normal uh constructor thing a uh, main method the other one is in runnable now i don't want you to extend threads mainly because what if you want to inherit from some other class? You can't do that if you because in Java, you, Java doesn't support multiple inheritance. At least, I mean, it doesn't support extending multiple classes. You can only extend one class 
and then that class extend another class. So implement whenever implement interfaces whenever possible, and then leave the in, leave extends to you know when you're gonna have to use inheritance. But sadly, we can't do that for the main method, so we'll have to wrap everything in a client object or a client class. So let's do that uh, instead of making a new file. I mean, you could make a new file. I, I'm just I'm lazy, so I'll just do class client. And then copy everything into this client thing. Ooh. Long bracket there. Oh yeah. That's funny. Alright. Constructor. There we go. So in the main what we have to do is, you know, we can also uh, pass in, you know, string post name import. I can just replace these over here. But this is a terrible way of concatenating strings, but you know, for for the purposes of for the purposes of this video, they'll do. Okay, everything looks fine. So in main, we'll just do new point and co-host. All right. So we have to. Do, we actually have to do the same thing for the server side. Uh, we can do it later. But yeah. So as I said, we want to implement implement runnable. I'm going to give a red underline because you have to implement this abstract run method. So let's implement methods. So, you know, here's the run method. So whatever's in the run method will run at the same time, quote unquote, as the other code in your, uh, you know, in your normal, no, normal um, outside of the run method. So what we want to do is we want to move these into the run method. That's not going to be a problem anymore. So you see, we don't have access to OIS anymore. So we have to move those declarations to the outside. And we have to try catch. So what's happening here is that when, you know, when we're waiting for the user input, this listener is constantly running in the background in a separate thread. And but the thing is, you know, just by putting just by placing it into the run method doesn't mean it's going to run. So we'll have to manually start this separate thread. So the way to do that is, you know, obviously, it's the run method, the method is called run. So you know, just do run, right? Easy. Wrong. That is not correct. If you just call run, it's going to call the run method in the single threaded fashion. So nothing's going to change. It's, this is just going to be some normal method that you, because you're the one calling it, but you don't want to be the one calling it because you don't handle threading. I mean, you kind of do, but you know, not the uh, inner workings of it. But one downside of implementing runnable instead of extending threads is that you can't start it inside of here you can't just because normally if you extend thread you can just do start and i'll start it but not in this case because a runnable interface only tells java that this is a class that could be executed in the multi-threaded fashion but it itself isn't a threat so you can't start something that isn't a threat so in order to start it to start the run method you have to make it into a thread first so we have to do that so the downside is that we have to start it from outside of this of this class. So we have to do it in the main method. So client C equals new client, and then we need to do a new thread called client. Let's call it client listener equals new thread. We just gotta uh, make it into a thread. So you can see here the thread can take in a runnable target, and that would be our client. And now if you do client this listener dot run not dot run dot start. Ooh. So that will start the run method here. So this is how you do it. I'll do extends thread on the server side just to show you the differences. So uh, we should be done here actually. 
And now let's move on to the server side. Again, let's abstract all this away. Can I actually extract it somehow? Never tried it. Should I trust Eclipse? Hmm, extract. Class. Oh yeah, I, I'm not gonna try that. <laughs> right, class server. Take it, take in the port number. So this should be the bracket here. Everything looks fine. Just have to replace that. All right. New server, let's do the same thing. And on the server side, what I'll do is that I'll, I'll extend thread. And what we can do here is maybe uh, override. Yeah, this this doesn't matter actually. You know, you can have it or not. Doesn't matter. So you see, it's the same thing. The only difference is that you can start it in here. But uh, let's hold off on that thought. Let's make it. Let's move the listening part into it. So just this part. And you can see it's complaining again. Uh, I probably have to declare those outside of. Constructor, so just access. And I also need, yep, try catch. Oh my, I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> That is way too close. Oh, it's not found. Session two. You are so needy. All right. So the main difference here, you can see that if we implemented runnable, the runnable interface, we have to start it from the outside. Well, for this one, when we extend thread, we can just start it from the inside like so. And, and that's it. That's how you start it. All right, so uh, let's see if it works, shall we? Start it. Yeah, I forgot to stop the other one again. There we go. Let's start this one. Oh, something else is running. Yeah. Okay. Now I should be able to type as many times as I want on the client and nothing will break. Uh oh. Something's not right here. Oh, what's going on? Oh yeah, oh man, uh, silly me. So something's not right here. Because we're always gonna, we're gonna be stuck in this wall forever. We're never gonna get past this constructor. So this will never get executed. So why don't we extract this into, into something else called public void um start app it is an app you know it's it's an app and we'll, we'll surround it and try catch Let's see it io exception i'm thinking io there you go and now we have to modify a little bit. So we, we start this first and then we do C dot start app. There we go. Now we can, now we can try this. Yeah, it's slightly more complicated, but it's, you know, 
theoretically it's better. Oh yeah, and one crucial mistake that we made, uh, we forgot to put it into a wild true loop. Man, sleep deprivation is real. Well, let's put this, it, it doesn't matter, honestly, I'll just, That is very silly. But even the SCP makes mistakes. That's just human nature because not a god yet. Um, let's try that again. Ah, you see here? I can type whenever I want to and then I don't I don't have to care about the order of things ever. So yeah. That is how you use multi-threading to overcome the issue of uh, the messages having to, you know, be in order. And in the next video, if I do have time, I'm going to show you how one server can handle multiple clients also using multi-threading. So uh, thanks for watching and maybe I'll see you in the next video. Bye.